The tipping point is 25%. It takes 25% of people in a group committed to a social change to create a new social norm. And that 25% of people is not going to be all activists and extroverts and people comfortable behind a megaphone or in front of a crowd. It will be some of that, yes, but it will also be a lot of regular people making incremental differences that build up to the tipping point that comes right before the exponential change. There's this quote from John Keats that I love, and it says, Medicine, law, business, engineering, these are noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. It goes beyond poetry though. Art is what we stay alive for. So if you're watching this and you make art of whatever kind, you could be the life force behind a movement or a revolution. Sometimes that's the obvious infusing a message behind the art that you physically create, but there are a lot of other not so obvious ways that you can use your skills and talents as activism. But trying to think up some of those ways can be difficult sometimes. I know from firsthand experience, so that's what this video is for. I came up with over 20 ideas of how to use art as activism, organized into art types, as well as a few examples of people who have used art to make a difference. If there's a protest that's coming up, you can volunteer to paint and design those posters. But you don't even have to wait for a protest. There are so many groups that you can join, activist groups local to your area that could need your help. There's always a need for creating pamphlets, for posters, digital media, and more. For example, there's this organization called Extinction Rebellion, which is a global environmental movement known for its nonviolent direct action and civil disobedience campaigns for climate action. And that has weekly art meetups to create stuff like that. Another idea is if you have a particular style or an item that you're known for that people like, you could offer to gift people maybe a smaller version of that if they show you evidence of a donation that they made towards a specific campaign. If you donate X amount of money to this campaign, I will gift you this item and they could just pay for shipping. I don't know if there's an actual term for this, but I call it sticker activism. You could design thought-provoking stickers that you can post in public or give away for people to post in public or itself for people to post in public that spark interest toward a cause. For example, there was this one meme going around a while back about stickers that were posted on packages of meat in grocery stores. And though it was ridiculed by the internet, it did bring awareness to the horrible conditions that farm animals are put through. The stickers could also have a QR code pointing to an informative website like Watching Dominion, for example. As a more collaborative example, you could also host an art auction. It could feature works donated by you or other local artists with all proceeds going towards a specific cause. It can really be as high key or low key as you want it to be. You could also look up food fridges in your area. If you don't know what that is, it's fridges that are set up in public spaces where people who need food can come and access them and people who can donate food can provide them. It just serves as like a drop off and pickup point. So you could look up food fridges in your area and see if they need an art refresh. If so, you can volunteer to revive it and use your skills to make it more attention grabbing for passersby. And that could potentially help encourage people to drop off more food because they will have more trust in the food fridge because it looks like it's being actively taken care of and maintained. So they'll be more confident that their donations are actually going to somewhere that will help. Another idea is you could thrift some clothes and you can paint messages or designs on them about a specific cause and you could sell them as activism pieces or you could even donate the money that you get from them to a specific cause. There is this quote that says, if I can't dance, I don't want to be part of your revolution. It was famously attributed to the iconic Emma Goldman, who was an anarchist and feminist imprisoned for her advocacy for contraceptive rights back in 1916. And while she didn't say those words in exactly that way, the power in them remains. So here are a few ideas for you dancers and choreographers. Storytelling is baked into dance, sometimes in more abstract ways. As a choreographer or dancer, you could pick a specific story that highlights an important cause and base a dance around it. You could post the dance to social media and if you're monetized on YouTube for example you could donate the proceeds to that cause or it could just be used as a think piece. For example there's this really awesome video I watched many years ago by Philip Schwieb about abusive relationships and it sticks with me to this day because it was so beautifully done and the dance was gorgeous and the production was also gorgeous but it doesn't even have to be that refined. Even a simple dance in front of a camera posted to social media could make waves. Dance also naturally sparks people's attention so if you're not the socially anxious type, you could pick a day and dance in public, spread awareness for a certain cause, and have it clearly delineated on some poster where the donation funds would be going to. And if going solo is too intimidating, you could do a dance mob. I know these can be cringy, but they're so powerful because they're impossible to ignore. It's a lot harder to walk by 20 
strangers doing a dance than just one person doing a dance. So people stop for those. That means organizing one with a clear message behind it could be a great way to get a lot of people thinking about it. Again, you could direct people to a donation box or an informative website to take it a step further. And then you can also post it to social media, of course, with the stranger's reactions. People eat that up. Now for writing from poetry to fiction to nonfiction, there are so many ways you can contribute. For example, you could do a crowdsourced story or poetry book or zine. You could invite poets and writers to contribute a piece about a specific cause and collect them and create a little anthology out of them. You could keep it digital, you can make it physical, make it free or make it paid with donations going toward that cause. You can even ask illustrative artists to contribute and turn it into a more artistic scene. You can even host letter writing campaigns and thanks to ChatGPT, drafting letters to send to representatives or companies is easier than ever, but AI will never have that same human experience, the first-hand emotions that can get people to really feel and think behind a message. So in collaboration, you and the computer could make more persuasive letters than ever, and there's power in numbers. So organizing a letter writing campaign where participants write letters to elected officials advocating for a legislative change about a cause can get some attention. Another idea is a story. A story doesn't have to be about a cause to be about a cause, if you know what I mean. For example, writing about nature and animals in a way that personalizes them can open up someone's eyes to the importance of conservation and protecting the environment, as not everyone has an innate connection to it. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, I did not grow up understanding people's love for nature, and it wasn't until hearing about people's stories and reading books about it that I actually started to feel that connection. And now my life is so much more colorful. It's such a huge part of who I am. And none of these stories that I'm thinking of were ones that were direct trying to advocate for environmental justice or whatever the case may be. One of my favorite books, The Overstory by Richard Powers, is a fiction, meaning it's not in your face, this is an activism book but in many ways it is. It's all about the lives of many different characters that have this profound connection to trees. And the story highlights how important the preservation of our ecosystem is without rubbing it in your face. And I think that's why it prompted so many readers all over the world to reflect on their role in protecting the planet's ecosystem. There's also the option of writing a children's book which is actually kind of a dream of mine as well. There's a quote that says, youths are the hope of today and the joy of tomorrow, and that couldn't be more true. The younger generation is the one that will change the world. And you can help aid that revolution by creating storybooks that introduce young readers to the cause's principles and values. There is no shortage of ways that photography and videography can be used to enact change. Visual media is everywhere now. It's the art that we consume most often from social media, pictures, to reels, to TikTok videos, to TV shows, to movies, the list goes on and on. And because of its ubiquity, it's probably become the skill that is most influential in this day and age. There are obviously infinite ways to harness the power of social media, so I will highlight a few examples that sparked my inspiration. Issa Leshko is a photographer with the Project, Allowed to Grow Old, which showcases portraits of aging farm animals in farm animal sanctuaries. It reflects the dignity and beauty of these elderly animals, which is something we rarely or never get to see. One, because these farm animals are usually killed in their childhood or in their teenage years in order to be turned into food. And two, because the vast majority of us never make that connection with these animals besides through the food on our plate which I wouldn't even call a connection. I can only imagine how it encourages viewers to reflect on their treatment of animals. Another photographer example is Chris Jordan, is known for his thought-provoking artwork in which he assembles thousands of little photographs to convey a powerful message about the environment. For example, his piece Roundup depicts 213,000 bees, which represents the amount of toxic chemical pesticides used on plants and soils around the world every 20 minutes. Or cigarette butts, which depicts 139,000 cigarette butts, which symbolizes the number of cigarettes smoked and discarded in the United States every 15 seconds. We all know Bob Marley, even if we never listen to reggae. He used his platform to advocate for peace, love, and social justice, and him and artists like him's legacies live on. Humans evolved to enjoy music for so many reasons, including group bonding, which is one reason that makes it so powerful as a social justice tool. Of course, you could write a song about a cause, which is often called a protest song, but here are a few more not-so-obvious ideas. You could host a online concert series. If you have any 
many friends that are monetized on YouTube. You could host a series that features different artists that all support a common cause, and you can donate all the revenue that you receive from that to that cause. And people could also donate directly on that stream or on that YouTube video as well. And if you perform live, something as simple as a dedication at the beginning of a song, even if the song doesn't really have to do with that cause directly, could have an impact. It will at the very least encourage people to ruminate on that topic while you provide the beautiful background music for it. You could also perform at rallies and protests. Offering to use your musical talents to perform at social justice events can help the performance engage and energize the audience so the message could be even more amplified. And now we get to food. Ugh, my favorite topic. Your favorite topic. Everyone's favorite topic, probably. Food is a love we all share, so here are some food-related ideas. Educational workshops. If you're a talented chef, you can host workshops or cooking classes that focus on sustainable, locally sourced, cruelty-free ingredients to help educate the participants about the environmental and health benefits of being a little more conscious in your food choices, all while you or they bake or cook something delicious. I don't know, that sounds like fun. I'd want to go to one of those. You can bring up community gardens, you can bring up of composting, emissions from transportation, the horrors of animal agriculture. There's so much that could be talked about here. And if you don't like in-person workshops, you can also host one virtually or just post videos online that goes into a little extra detail about the ingredients you're using or why you chose the food that you chose. So a few years ago, me and a bunch of my coworkers came up with this idea of having like an international day once a month where we'd pick a country and research some of the food that they ate there and try to make our vegan version of them, listen to to that country's music and learn a little bit about the culture and hang out. It was so much fun and I could easily see it expanded into something like a fundraiser, whether it be small or large. For example, featuring food from a country that is facing a humanitarian crisis. It could be an event, but it could also be a little pop-up restaurant or a food stall. People resonate more with the cause when they have a connection to it or when they have immersed themselves in it because it no longer seems so foreign, you know? So this can be a really powerful tool, in my opinion. If you're a skilled forager, you can also hold foraging tours. This would be really fun but also make sure you actually know what you're doing because it could also be really really dangerous. We can talk about the importance of conservation, of native plants, the beautiful biodiversity that we're losing every day. Lots of important topics here. This could also be expanded into a cooking demonstration with the collected plants. This is also another way to form a personal connection with nature which encourages people to act on it. Another idea I love is I used to be a part of this group that on the weekends would get together and buy some cheap groceries and make some sandwiches, make some snacks, make little goodie bags and then pass them out to people who need them. Usually that was homeless people. This or food drives to collect and distribute nutritious foods to people who need it could be a great idea, especially if it can collaborate with local food banks, shelters, and organizations working on food insecurity. I have so many more ideas spanning fashion, jewelry, technology, and on and on and on. And I know if you're watching this, you're probably not involved in all of these different art forms, but hopefully something sparked your inspiration. I definitely was super inspired when researching for this video. The potential really is infinite. Please drop your favorite artist activist if you have one in the comments. I'd love to check them out. I'd love to know if you enjoyed this video or if you didn't actually find it useful at all. Criticism, critique, or compliment, I'll take it. And thank you for watching. See you next time cruelty flea ingredient Cru cruelty flea ingredients being a little more conscious conscious where is my english thing